Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've got another project in the garage. This time a mid 90s to early nine, uh, 96 maybe. Single point injection car. Lovely paint. Uh, like a BRG metallic with a really nice interior. It's got a uh, kind of a white leather. Leather, yeah, real, real nice. Um, typical wood grain dash for a, an injection car. And the owner on this one sent it down to me because uh, it's got some running issues and uh, he hasn't had time to, time to look at it. So I'm gonna be having a look at this car. Yeah, the paint's just great. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, feature each little bit that I have to do to this car to get it back up and running. Um, I did drive it a little bit before I put it in the garage, and uh, there's some minor brake work that needs to happen. And it seemed like it was running kind of rough, so we'll just have to see what's, uh, what's going on. I suspect with these single-point cars, they always have issues with the vacuum lines, so I'll have to get into there and, and check vacuum lines, but... Um, I'll just go through a full service basically on this car because it's new to me and it's new to the owner. So who knows what kind of, of condition the, uh, the mechanicals are or, or even the sensors and things like that. So follow along while I dig into this thing and, and uh, find out what's wrong with it. And under the bonnet, we have the standard 1275 with the later computer controlled fuel injection um, distributor. Obviously, the computers are here. And this is a single point car, not a twin point car. I wonder if this is, yeah, it's loose enough. Um, yeah, as you can see, single injector to run this whole system. So my job is to figure out what, what's going on with it. Like I said, the, the owner did complain that it was running a bit rich. And I suspect, uh, I suspect the vacuum lines will need to be looked at over there. Uh, I can certainly smell some old fuel, so it's definitely been sitting for a while. But while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and check all of the ignition stuff and make sure it's up to spec before I, uh, I go any further because there's always a chance that there's an ignition problem that's tripping the computer into adding more fuel. So we'll just have to see what's going on. But yeah, pretty much standard fare underneath this hood here. Still pretty nice. Um, one of the things I want to point out is that this car is not leaking. Like, I mean, everything's dry under here, which is kind of impressive. Well, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on in the engine bay here. Um, so I think what I'd like to do, since it was smelling quite rich fuel-wise, I think I want to start by just checking the, uh, the little vacuum line that runs the computer up to the intake manifold, especially because there's this k &N filter here, so maybe someone's messed about in there, but I want to check the little fuel vapor line, vacuum line, because I often find it broken at the manifold, so that could just be the reason why it's overfueling, but we'll start there, check that, and then I want to check the condition of all these, these uh, breather lines, make sure there's no vacuum leak going into the intake, and then I'll go ahead and move on to um, kind of more maintenance items like I want to check valve valve gaps in here I'll go ahead and check the wires check the conditions of the plugs and maybe check the condition of the cap as well these are kind of like original wires they're kind of stiff so um, definitely want to start checking all the standard maintenance items like I said owner doesn't know and since I've never seen this car before I certainly want to get a good handle of it before I send it back to him but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check out the uh, the vacuum that little vacuum line first so I've gone ahead and removed the air filter so that I can get a better look at the vacuum lines that run to the back of the intake manifold. And when I come back here, got the camera to refocus a little bit. So you can see here the brown one um, is broken. A little broken end there is clearly visible. And this other one over here on the right Normally that one is the one that runs to the intake. There's a, um, 
small uh, valve in the intake to re-divert exhaust heat to the intake for warm-up, but this one's been blocked off. Um, I'll probably put a better little rubber cap on there than a screw, but uh, clearly, clearly this is a case of, you know, failed vacuum hose. So I'll go ahead and put new ones on and then move on to the ignition work. So what we have here is the uh, vacuum line that runs through the fuel vapor trap to the ECU. So this is the manifold, runs the fuel vapor trap, and then the fuel vapor trap runs this black line to the main computer. Um, this is the broken fitting we had at the manifold going to the short yellow pipe, and then they had this somewhat flexible junction here. And then the, the one that ran to the computer is someone to use old fuel line and some washer line to connect it up. So someone's been here in the past trying to replace these fittings, but fortunately I had a new kit, although this hose is a bit shorter than standard, so I had to shorten this one, but um, I'm going to go ahead and fit these parts back on now. So now that we've replaced that vacuum line, um, let's go ahead and start on the ignition work here. So I've got the multimeter set up and zero it out. Point two is usually what this reads. Okay, so first thing first, let's check the coil. Make sure this coil is the correct one. Um, this later system should have uh, like 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So this one's reading, yeah, come on, dirty contacts. Really? One. 09, 08. Okay, so it's still within range. So this is the correct coil, so I'm glad I checked. Now what I'll do is I'll pull the plugs, wires, and cap and measure all those resistances. Alrighty, so here is the cap and and looks okay. Just got quite a bit of, uh, you know, use on it. I would be surprised if this is perhaps the original cap, but, you know, still serviceable, but I wouldn't mind replacing with a fresh one. Let's go ahead and check a uh, plug wire here. So, number one lead. Yeah, 5.6K. Pretty standard for... Standard uh, suppression wires. Go ahead and check the uh, the King Lee next. See what we got coming out of the coil here. Yeah, look at those lovely wires. Wouldn't mind doing a set of wires, just anyway. 7,000K, so yeah, they're starting to age out. Um, could probably leave this wires alone, but I wouldn't mind putting a fresh set in anyway. So next up, I'll go ahead and pull the plugs out and see what the condition of those are. And so let's uh, get these out. Oh, nice and black. All right. These are BPR6s. Fairly fresh looking, but sooted up. Let's check the second one here. Yep, same. Okay. Well, I'm going to guess the rest of these are all sooted up as well. So either that... That vacuum pipe's been broken for a long time, or perhaps maybe a coolant temp sensor's gone bad, or something else, maybe the O2 sensor's just shot, but uh, looks like there'll be more to do, more checking, but I'll get, a fresh assess I'll get a fresh set of plugs put in here, gapped appropriately, and um, then I'll get the computer hooked up and see what the... Uh, Computer says, yeah, look at that one. Nice. So, even fuel injector motors run poorly if not maintained properly. 
Boy, those gaps look huge as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and check these gaps first to see what this is at, just out of curiosity. So the gap should be about 35 thousandths. And uh, yeah, I can pretty much just drop this feeler gauge in here, right? Yeah, so, I mean, they're kind of near 35, but that's pretty loose, so. Let's see what these other ones measure out at. Yeah, same thing, too loose. Okay, well, either these gaps have opened up in time or someone didn't set these appropriately, but they're kind of in the 35 range. Probably closer to 37 or 38, I'd say, maybe even 40. Yeah, let's just double check here. This combo would be 38. Yeah, so this is about 40 thou on this one. So someone didn't set the spark plug gaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit a new set, gapped at 35 thou. And I'll find another set of wires, maybe a cap and rotor too. So here's the new plug, same resistive one. Now I'm running resistive plugs because one, this is high power and two, uh, computer fuel injection plus stereo. So I need to run the resistor plugs and probably resistor wires to maintain noise suppression for those systems. But uh, yeah, here's a new plug and I'm checking the gap and look at that, 35 thou right there. So I'll go ahead and get another, the rest of them fitted and checked. Well, I ended up changing everything. Um, new plugs. The owner actually had a new set of wires cap and rotor in the car as well as a coil so it looks like they were planning on doing this anyway but uh, the reason I went ahead and changed the coil was that when I measured the resistance on this coil it was about one ohm minus the 0.2 that's built into the meter here so it was 0.8 or 0.9 somewhere in that range uh, the new coil comes in at right away at uh, come on 0.7.8 so you know it's, it's a much lower resistance than the old, old coil is so that's perfect so we want we want good ignition performance and this one was showing its age so um, I will go ahead and recycle this one but uh, in the meantime yeah everything everything got replaced so this car should have as much ignition power as it possibly needs to run now it's a question of is it over fueling so I'll have to get it up and running but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do a valve, go through the valve process of setting and adjusting the, uh, the valve gaps, or rocker clearances if you want to call it that. Um, I also want to do an oil change as well, since I don't want to start with a bunch of dirty oil. So that's what I'm going to do next.